Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. My name is Nicole Pascal with Topaz, and I'd like to welcome back our Topaz expert, Mr. Greg Rastami. Hey, Greg. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Greg is going to be talking to us today about how to create a really uh, simple silhouette and glow with simple techniques and a pretty elegant workflow using Topaz and Photoshop. Greg is an expert here at Topaz. He's been at the forefront of the technology from the beginning. And if you've ever been to a photo show, you have probably seen him there at the Topaz booth. He is our trade show rep. So uh, thank you again, Greg, for being here. Let me just tell you a couple more things about the technical side. If you're having any trouble with sound or your screen, you can log off and log back in. That usually resolves the issue, especially if you shut down anything on your system that you might be running, such as Flash, that you don't need. You can get rid of that, and it usually will solve that. If you have any um, questions, you can type them into the GoToWebinar Questions module. It's on the panel. And I will be answering those as quickly as possible throughout the presentation, and then we'll have a nice Q&A session with Greg after um, his presentation. And Edward just asked, is this the Greg Rastami that pulls a coin through his hand? It is. Greg is an amazing mag magician, and you can check that out on his website. It's rastamimagic.com. Very cool stuff. So, Greg, with that, I will go ahead and give it over to you. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much, uh, Nicole, for such a great introduction. <laughs> yes, and the coin through the hand. Thing, yeah. <laughs> well, um, hello everybody. We're going to be going through the techniques of creating silhouettes. So uh, I think I'm sure that everybody can see my screen right now. This is the image that we're going to be talking about, and uh, uh, this is the image that went out so that everybody could see the image that we're going to be producing here for you. Um, let me show you where that image started. Essentially, uh, this is the before version of the image. The image um, came from the layer cake collection. If you guys are not familiar with Layer Cake, it's pretty awesome. They provide um, uh, essentially a library of amazing clip art that's been professionally cut out. Uh, in this particular case, this was not cut out. That's why I had to use uh, Topaz Remask to cut it out and to create this silhouette. Uh, in general, using silhouettes is a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of artistic uses of silhouettes. So in this case, I took a photo of a girl, and she's just in front of a, a white studio background, and then I took one of the backgrounds that you find on a Macintosh, and I had to make a funny for Topaz, so here you go. I Topaz, <laughs> you know, so uh, kind of harkening back to the iPod advertisement. So again, silhouettes are uh, really a wonderful, simplistic, um, and artistic way of conveying a message. So without any further ado, let's get started and show you exactly how it works. So I'm going to do this tutorial all in Photoshop. So every technique we're going to be talking about is Photoshop specific. Um, this is the image that we're going to start out with. And you notice that it has just been loaded in um, as a JPEG. And it's right now a background. So to be able to actually use Topaz Remask, first double click on your background and just simply click OK. What that's going to do is going to unlock the background so that um, you can actually mask it. Next, we'll jump into our favorite masking tool, Topaz Remask 3. Okay. And here, you notice that uh, by default, again, Topaz Remask uh, is going to make everything green, which means green is the color that identifies what you want to keep. And here is where you're going to create a thick brush. And you also notice that the color of your brush is blue. And blue is going to be the parts of the image that we want to compute. So now this process of outlining, this is going to take a little bit of time. As you can see, this is the way you're going to do it. A couple of tips and pointers about outlining your subjects here in Remask. I usually do it by really, really zooming in my subject. And in areas where you want, when you have a, like a harsh transition or a hard cut, like for example, the area that you see here across the arm, you want to use a smaller brush as you do a rough outline. But as you come to areas that have like a lot of wispy details, like the areas you see here with the hair, um, you want to increase the size of your brush. Another important tip about working in Remask is that changing the size of your brush can actually be done while you're holding down the left mouse button. And that's really, really handy. And what that means is, as I go around, let's say, for example, here I want to make the brush really small as I get that edge. Uh, once again, getting it over here. But now if I want to make my brush big, 
I never let up on the mouse. All I did was just simply, as I continue drawing with the mouse, I'm using the left bracket and the right bracket keys on the keyboard to change the size of the brush. Now, since this outlining process is going to take a little bit of time, I've already done this for you from before. Uh, so let me show you. It took maybe about three minutes to do. And uh, another wonderful capability in Remask is how you can take the work that you've already done and save it out. And so uh, this is the work after it's been done. And this is the tri map. And as you can see, the hardest part of the tri map was actually uh, drawing in that outline. And then by using a flood fill tool, like in this case, the red bucket fill tool over here, you can actually fill in all the areas that you don't want. Um, for example, uh, one area that I bucket filled in was this area right here. As you can see, that's going to be transparent. And so now, once you've created your tri map, it's now time for the magic of remask. You click on a compute button, it does a little bit of computation, and it comes up with our original mask. Now, at this point, I usually, instead of seeing it as a mask channel, I will switch it over to the keep. And I also want you to notice how I've made the background color be very similar to what I see in my mind's eye as to what I want to have as the background. I know that the background is going to be bright. It's going to be a silhouette. And so that's why I've made the background be orange. Uh, let me show you how you do that. Under Menu, you're just going to go up here to say Set Background Color. And by default, um, Remask will set the background color to be this gray color, which is actually really, really nice. And for most things, the gray is going to work great. Uh, but in this particular case, again, since I knew I was going to have a background that was going to be like a sunset, I chose something that was going to be kind of like a yellowish, uh, orangish kind of a color that would be analogous to a sunset. And I clicked OK, and that's the color that it gave me there. It was really, really bright. Now, at this point, um, I'm going to highlight some of the refinements that I do with the mask. Usually, right after I do compute, I look at the keep channel, and I take the foreground color recovery slider, and I basically I'm going to crank it up all the way. Let me show you what that does. Let's crank it up all the way. And you probably noticed that immediately it took some of the small color contamination that was coming in from the original image, which was kind of a grayish background, and it's getting rid of that. So now we're getting a much better uh, color transition around the edges. Now, as far as refining these masks go, uh, it's really straightforward. I'm going to now click on the red brush, which identifies the background, make my brush a little smaller. And uh, I'll zoom into this area here so you can see what I'm doing. If I see any of these little ghosting effects, all I'm going to do is just kind of click into these little ghost areas. And it's going to help take some of these little small ghosting artifacts around the hair away. As I come around the edge, it's the same thing. Just kind of click every time I see a little ghosting artifact, and it helps get rid of that. And it'll really, really solidify your mask. I see a little bit of over here. Over here. I, can, I, I click on that. Uh, another thing that I really want to emphasize is the ability of working in two views at the same time. Um, I can't highlight this enough. It, it has saved me so many times to work in two different views. For example, here uh, on the right-hand side, I could see that because I'm looking at the mask channel, the ear is a little transparent. And we know that it's not supposed to be transparent. It's supposed to be solid. So that's why now, um, using the keyboard shortcut for the green brush. Uh, by the way, if you ever wonder what the keyboard shortcuts are, when you put your mouse cursor on any button, the first thing that it tells you in parentheses is the letter Q. So Q is the keyboard shortcut for the foreground brush. And uh, if you're trying to go really fast in Remask, I highly recommend that you learn the keyboard shortcut so that just put your left hand where your fingers are on the Q, W, and E key, and it will really help you go through your masks much faster. So now you can see that because I can see both my keep image and my mask image, um, just kind of go around the edges and click away any of the little problems that you see. For example, here at the tip of the nose, that's supposed to be more uh, solid right there. So I can just do a few clicks with the green brush, which is the keep brush. And if there's little dots hanging around the edges there, I switch over to the red brush, which is for the background brush, and it gets rid of that. Um, same for over here. So there's a few problems there. Now you notice how I switch back and forth. Sometimes I will click on the left view, which is in this particular case uh, the keep image. And other times I'll be over here on the right side and I'll just click right inside the mask. It really doesn't matter what image you're looking at as you um, work in Remask. Just click away and it's smart enough to figure out really what you want. Okay, I'll just a little tiny little hole right there. I want it to be more transparent, so I'll just click on that. It's going to make that more transparent as well.
All right. Let me zoom out, just take a look at the whole thing as I go around the edges. Uh, essentially, I'm looking for problems right now. I see a little problem right here. Let me zoom in on it here and show it to you. Okay, see this problem area right here? Uh, once again, I'll put it into a dual view so you can see that better. The mask doesn't look very good over there, so uh, we'll switch over to the green brush and just click a few times right around the edges and it's going to help really, really solidify that. And uh, same thing the other way around, which is uh, for the actual outside of it, I change it to a red brush and click a few times there and it'll help clean up some of the outsides of our brush. Outsides of our mask, I should say. All right. Now, I'm not going to um, really, really, really finesse this mask because um, the process of finessing the mask is something that uh, we cover a lot in other tutorials that we do here at Topaz Labs. So um, after this is all done, at this point, you're going to hit the OK button. In fact, before I hit OK, usually what I do is um, I'll just kind of like zoom out and hit the Fit button here, uh, which is also uh, Command-0 or and, and now in the case of the PC, it's going to be control zero, and it will fit your entire image into the window. Uh, and it's looking pretty good. You know, I can see other areas that I can refine even further, but I'm going to stick with it the way that it is right now. Let's just hit OK. All right, there we go. So now we've created our mask. Right? It's now time to introduce our background into the shot. So we've already done the hardest part of this whole process, which has been masking the rider and the horse out of the background. So for the sky, again, I used um, the layer cake elements. So I'm going to browse in Bridge. And this is the sky that I used. And inside of Bridge, a nice uh, tip is if every time you see an image, if you hit the space bar, it'll just make your image full screen for you. So you can really, really examine what your image looks like before you commit to loading it. Uh, double click. So that image is going to load up all by itself. And so now uh, I'm going to do a Command A or Control A on the PC for Select All. Uh, copy, which is uh, just Command C, which you guys already know. It's for copy and paste. We go back to our image and we're going to paste it in, which is Command B. So now it pastes it on top of the uh, writer. We don't want that. So right now you notice how in the lower right hand corner I'm just reordering the layers so that the background actually for the sky does go in the background. Okay, just kind of moved it up and down. All right. Now we know that this is a very, very high resolution image. So um, I'm going to, for a moment, um, zoom out of all this and then use Command T on the computer for resizing my background and just kind of grab the background now and resize it until I get the image and the, the composition that I'm looking for. And really what I want is to take some of the brightest parts of my writer and to have it be right behind the writer because I know that I'm going to be doing a glow effect here in just a moment. So I want to make sure that I get a lot of brights around him. Okay. Once we got that in, we hit the Enter key. So that commits the changes. So let's take a look at what we got. Here, let's make it fit on the screen. So that in itself actually looks pretty good, but it's still not a silhouette. So here is now how you're going to create the silhouette effect. First, right after I do a mask in Remask, usually what I do is um, select the actual mask channel here in Photoshop. You see it right there. Uh, right click on it and say Apply Layer Mask. And what you'll notice what it will do now is that then, and by the way, only do this if you're satisfied with your final mask. Now it's going to take that layer mask that you had and it will actually apply it to the layer. So now the actual layer mask itself has disappeared. It's just a part of the layer itself. All right, so now that we've done this, um, how do we create the actual silhouette effect? Uh, select your layer that has the cowboy in it, and we're going to choose hue and saturation as a way of modifying it. And also make sure that you only apply this hue and saturation um, to this one particular layer, so it's not going to be applied to uh, all the layers that are below it, so that you do that with that little button right there. So we want to first just make that foreground really, really dark, and you can see immediately we get that beautiful silhouette out of it. You can see that just a lightness control here, so I can make it bright, I can make it dark, um, but let's make it a little dark. Now you're going to notice as I do this, I'm going to zoom in, that I'm going to keep just a little bit of brightness for her shirt, as if there is just a small amount of light 
that's coming in that's kind of like ambient light from the surroundings. Uh, also, I'm going to click on the colorize button here in um, the hue and saturation controls. And let's bring that down again so we get it really, really bright. Pardon me, I should say really dark. And you can see that right now the color that's being applied to it, this reddish color, is actually pretty perfect the way that it is right now. I'm going to saturate that even more so you can really see what's going on. I'll zoom in on it so we can really see what's going on over here. So that is the red. And because it's a hue control, now I can change that to any color I want. You know, it could be green, it could be whatever, but in this case, having that uh, orangish, reddish color is going to perfectly match with the background that we have. So where there was a little bit of light in our original image, remember that's our original image right there, okay, it's taking that into consideration while it's creating that silhouette. All right. So once we've got this happening, uh, that silhouette to most people would be done. But in nature, silhouettes actually don't do that. <laughs> what silhouettes do is whenever there is a silhouette, the reason why there is a silhouette in the first place was because the foreground was not being lit and the background is really bright and the camera essentially is exposing for that background, which in this case, of course, is the big, beautiful uh, sky. All right. So normally what happens in a lens is that the background wants to bloom on top of the foreground silhouette element. And so this is now where I'm going to introduce to you a wonderful glow effect. And here's how the glow effect works. Select your background layer and do a duplicate here in Photoshop. So duplicate layer. You can also do that with uh, a command J that will also immediately duplicate a layer to us, a, a quick shortcut. Take that layer that you just duplicated and move it on top of everything else. Okay. Now for right now, it's going to, since it is on top of everything else, it's going to completely wipe out everything else that we have. And we'll get back to our composition here in just a moment. Right after you've done that, um, sometimes I'll even rename that layer, so it's called Glow. It's just that, you know, for my own uh, bookkeeping, I know now that it's called Glow. All right. Then select your image that had the mask, which is our cowboy, by hitting command click on it. And what that's going to do now is that's going to actually select the mask of that layer. And since we are working with the glow layer, and that's how I clicked on that, uh, whatever we do within that mask is going to be applied to that image. First, we're just going to fill that in with black. And so fill, choose black. You can see there's a couple different choices over here, but I'm going to choose black and hit OK. All right. So right off the bat, what it just did right now is that it just filled in that black into our mask area. And that actually looks pretty amazing. You know, it just looks like the, um, the silhouette effect that we already have. But we're going to use this as a way of creating a glow. Right after you've done this, the next thing you want to do is look at your image in general and decide what areas of the image you would like to have bloom or glow. Like right now, these areas that are orangish and yellowish, the bright areas, seem like those should be the areas that we want to glow. And the rest of it, we really don't want to glow. And this is where I'm just going to bring in a levels control. So image, adjustment, levels. There we go. Uh, let's just take the things that we want to glow and really, really, really make those bright. Okay, see how what's happening right now is all these areas that were bright are becoming even brighter, like this. And the areas that we don't necessarily want to have that much glow on, uh, let me ease off on that just a bit like that too. So we get some of that going on there. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, looks great. Okay, once we get that, we hit OK. And then finally, we're going to produce the glow effect. The glow effect is nothing more than a Gaussian blur. Okay, let me actually, uh, as I do this Gaussian blur, zoom in on it here for you just so you can see what's going on. Okay, so remember what we're concerned with right now is how much blur we want to generate, how much of a glow that we want to have around our subject. Now, as you take the Gaussian blur and as you increase that radius, okay, I want you to imagine how that edge is now spilling on top of your original image. In fact, usually what I do to really, really see that effect is I take that glow layer and I change it to be screen. So uh, as far as the way that it's being combined in, so maybe change it to screen, and now I go into uh, the blur again as before, and let's just really crank it up. Okay, So now you're already beginning to see how this glow effect is happening, how if we didn't have glow, 
it's just such a harsh cut. Whereas now we got the glow, we can see that blooming around the edges. And I'm going to either make it really, really exaggerated or not so. Now in this particular case, let's go ahead and exaggerate it just so that you can really see an effect as far as the before and after goes on. Okay. I like that one right there, so let's go ahead and hit OK. All right. Let's kind of look at that. Now, the only problem that we have right now is that because we had made this particular layer screen, it's making everything become too bright, which is not what we want. All we want is the areas that are going to be kind of blooming into our character. So the last thing you need to do is, uh, again, command click on your um, layer that had the mask. But this time, invert your selection. Inverse. And again, as before, fill that in with a black. So here, uh, under Edit, Fill with Black. Hit OK. And that's it. And we're done. So I will now deselect everything. I'll kind of zoom away from it all, just so you can see the the final effect. And uh, I will zoom in on it just a little bit over here so you can see really, really what's going on. Now, uh, also, i like to highlight for you what that glow effect actually looks like. You know, so this is what the glow layer looks like all by itself. So you can see that it's borrowing the colors that are from the original image in the background. So no matter what the background is that you have, that is what's actually blooming around your foreground silhouette. And usually at this point, uh, let me change that back to screen so we can see it being added on top of our original image. Uh, usually at this point, if I think it's a little bit too much, and in this case it actually does look like it's a little too exaggerated, I'll take that glow and take the opacity of it and bring it down just a bit. You know? So it's not going to be so outlandish, you know, it's have a little bit of a glow effect. And as far as a before and after goes, let's give you a, a little contrast. This is what the silhouette looks like without any glow applied. And uh, here it is with the glow applied. So you can see that in the original, for example, where the ropes are uh, here for the rider. In the original one, it's just a solid rope, you know, and also for the hair, just very solid. Whereas when we turn on the glow layer, now some of the light from the background is spilling on top of your foreground silhouette, and it makes it look that much more realistic. So that is the pretty much the entire workflow for how to create silhouettes, even with the glow thrown in there too. Thanks, Greg. That was awesome. I learned a few things there myself, so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so now we're going into our question and answer portion of this webinar. If you have any questions, you can type them into your questions module, and I will uh, try to ask Greg as many as we can within the next 20 minutes. So let's start out with some that are already in there. Um, asked by quite a few people, did you actually name the source that you were grabbing your images from? Or the, I, I believe in the beginning you did, but I wasn't sure. Oh, where the images are coming from. Yeah, mm -hmm. the images are actually coming from uh, the Layer Cake collection. It's uh, just the LayerCakeElements.com is where um, these images are coming from. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you can go over just the glow part, just a little bit uh, again on how you filled in that black part when it was the big glow, and then you got just the outline of the glow. If you could go over okay. that one more time. Sure. Sure. Let me let me let me do that for you one more time. Um, so as we said before, you know, essentially what we're trying to do or what we're trying to create, I should say, is um, we're trying to create kind of like a glow layer. And, and this is what a, a glow layer looks like. You know, that's, I got it right now isolated on the screen. Um, let me take you through that process here, just once again, really simply, step by step. Uh, I'll delete the glow layer, so we'll start completely from scratch. You're going to take whatever is your background and first duplicate it. So I'm going to Command J right now to duplicate it. Uh, take that duplicate layer and move it on the top of everything. So you have to realize that glow is going to be glowing on top of everything, not behind it. Right? So that's why it's all the way at the top here of our composition. Next, um, change the way that it gets composited to screen. So now it becomes additive, actually. So it's now adding to the image that's behind it. right? Now we want to essentially cut out a hole 
for where the rider is, where the foreground silhouette is. And the way that you're going to cut out that hole is um, just command click on the layer with the cowboy. And what that does now is it actually um, does the marching ants and it selects that mask um, that's for the cowboy. So now that we have that selected, since we have the layer selected here for uh, the sky, we want to punch black out of that. So uh, under edit, hold down here to fill. It's, uh, usually I do that with shift F5. In fact, you can see it says that right here for the uh, keyboard shortcut. And you can choose either white or black. And we know it has to be black because we want to basically punch a hole out of it and hit, hit OK. And so now what that, what that just did right now is that it punched a hole out of the areas that we don't want to add onto the image. So that's the, the writer. Now that you've done that, you can deselect your layer. I'm doing that with Command D. Uh, you can also just go to selection and say, you know, deselect. I'll do the same thing. Uh, now we want to actually apply the glow effect. And the glow effect, as I said, was nothing more than a blur. So you pull down to Gaussian blur. Okay. And uh, as you do this, you can actually zoom in on it here and take a look at the effect. And in fact, uh, what I usually like to do is as I, as I look at the glow that it's generating, I'll toggle on and off my preview. So here is without any glow applied. And here is with the glow applied. And it's really wonderful because immediately I can see without the glow, the hair is just black, right? Whereas once I apply the glow, I can see how the background light is kind of spilling on top of the image here in the foreground. And uh, if I like that you know, amount of glow, I stay with it. If I want it to be more, I can crank that up even more. So now you can see that it's really, really, really spilling into the character. And it's very interesting, the kind of glow that we have over here. So in this particular case, since I'm doing this again, let's actually make it exaggerated. Let's make it be a lot. So you can see that right now it's quite a bit of glow coming around the character, the silhouette of the character. Uh, we hit OK. And now the only problem that we have is that because this layer is screen, it's taking everything that's in the sky and it's adding it to the original image, which is obviously not what we want because we liked the way the colors looked in the original sky that was in the background. So uh, at this point, you want to do the reverse. You want to essentially cut out everything other than the writer. And so the way we do that is we, again, command click on our layer that had the cowboy cut out. But this time, we're going to invert that selection. And as before, we're going to fill it in with black. Fill, black, we hit OK. And now we're done. Now we can deselect the, our layer. And I'll go ahead and zoom in on this here for you just so you can see um, how exaggerated of an effect that is that time. Um, again, let me highlight what that glow layer looks like all by itself. So this is right now what the glow layer looks like without anything else applied. And it's kind of cool, actually. You can see how if there was a real glow there, how it would kind of spill into the character that you have in the foreground. Um, but when you put it back into the screen mode, then it just adds to the image. And uh, that's the final effect. And again, a little before and after. Here's what it would look like if there was no glow applied. Here it is with the glow applied. And if you think that's too much, you take the opacity control and just bring it down. So you can get either a, a really exaggerated kind of an effect, which is what you're seeing over here, or by bringing it down, you're going to get more of a subdued effect. And then finally, um, if you think that your um, foreground silhouette is too much of a silhouette, that's also easy to change because at any time, you can click on your hue and saturation layer, which is your modifier, and change that to be whatever you want. So if I wanted to bring back more of my horsemen, I could. Or if I want to make it even darker than what it is, I can do that too. So it's one of the nice things about having modified layers. It's just easy to change. Very I cool. hope that answered your question. Yes, I believe it did. I, I have a question from Catherine who says, um, or who asks, why this method, why do you prefer this method over just using the inner or outer glow in the effects ah, area? Thank you so much for asking that question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question. Let me, let me give you uh, a little before and after on that just to show you what happens when you just simply use the inner or outer glow in Photoshop. Okay? So uh, as you know, in Photoshop, you can just simply double click on any layer and it brings up the layer styles. And in this particular case, we want to use the inner glow. 
So I've selected inner glow and screen is perfectly fine. We're going to choose a color. So over here, let's click on, let's say, a color that's indicative of this. Let's say this is a good color that would show it. And also we're going to take the size and crank that up. Okay. Uh, the softness is pretty good. The size is good. Opacity, let's bring the opacity down. If we think that's the wrong color, let's try choosing a different color. Let's try choosing a color like this one over here. Okay, and let's hit OK. All right, so let's now compare that to what would happen, what I just did right now. Now you notice that with this kind of an inner glow, the glow is not intelligent about what the background material is. All it's doing is just taking the outline and it's creating this inner glow coming around into it. Whereas what I just did right now was is very much changing and it's variable. It's actually the colors of the background that are blooming and glowing into the foreground element. And that's a very, very important aspect of this is that in real life, glow is not uniformly going around your outline. So I hope that answers that question. Yes, I think it definitely shows why this is a uh, <laughs> why this is a little bit more natural. Okay, yeah. let's look at it. By, by the way, as a, as, a, as a before and after, you know, this is what my glow technique looks like, right? And uh, here is what just Photoshop's glow technique looks like right there. <laughs> All right. Great. So let's see a couple other questions here. Okay, Sam asks. Um, he he missed how you got the hue and saturation layer to work like it's working now. Can you kind of go over that step? Okay, sure. And can you also Absolutely. go I'm gonna, over... I'm going to take the hue and saturation layer right now. It's okay. I'll, I'll take the hue and saturation layer and I'll delete it so we have absolutely nothing going on, right? The only thing that you do is you select the layer that you want to have, basically an adjustment layer attached to it, and it's right here down at the bottom. Let me zoom in on it so everybody can see what's going on. So select the layer that you want to apply this hue and saturation effect. Here, you're going to select hue and saturation. And immediately, you'll notice that at the top, uh, right above it, it's going to actually show you an adjustment layer. In this case, it's hue and saturation. So uh, the first thing that I do usually is I click Colorize, because I want the whole thing to be of a uh, particular color. I'm going to bring the brightness down. Okay. Now, also, one other thing that's very, very important is you want to make sure that this adjustment layer is only going to be applied to this particular layer and not everything below it. And you do that with this button right here. Let me turn that off just for a moment so you can see what's going on. And I'll turn it on here for you. And that button is labeled, this adjustment effect you know, affects all layers below. Click to, clip to layer. So it clips it to the layer that's right below it. And you'll see a little arrow will also appear that shows that this adjustment layer is only affecting the layer that's below it, not all of the layers that are below it. So once you've done that and you click on Colorize, uh, we can now bring the brightness down. And you can see how this is complete under your control. And I usually crank up the saturation over here because I want more color coming in. Uh, and if I was to bring this up higher, I would see more and more of the background of the cowboy's shirt. By the way, it's actually not a cowboy. It's a cowgirl. It's a minor piece of trivia about the photographer. <laughs> it's a she, not a he. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell. Yeah, yeah it's hard to tell. <laughs> okay, um, another question here is how did you um, apply the background layer? I'm sorry, I forgot who asked that, but I remember it was a question. I have some questions coming in pretty fast, but somebody um, had asked about how you had applied the background la layer behind your, your mask and got um, that. Oh, how did I apply the background layer? Mm -hmm. um, when, when I first created the mask, as you remember, it was nothing more than just that, right? Um, so the next thing that I did was I double-clicked on this image in uh, Bridge, and here's a bridge right here. And as you can see, all I did is just double click on that. And when I double clicked on it, it opened it up over here in Photoshop. Uh, then I did a select all, which is Command A or Control A for the PC, uh, a copy, which is Command C. And then you can go to the image that you have over here and just paste it in. Um, I'm going to actually delete the layer that I have over here right now, just so I can do it for you one more time. Uh, if you paste in something here right now, what you're going to notice is it's going to paste it in, like in this case, it's in the wrong order because it's 
pasting into the cutout, which is not what I want. Let me uh, pull it out of that and pull it into the, here in the background. And all you're doing right now is just changing the order of the layers here. And that's essentially, by moving it up or down, I can change the, you know, it's going to be on top of everything, or it's going to be behind it. And in this case, you can see that it is actually behind what we had with our writer. And at that point, once it was behind, uh, it was just a matter of command T, and that allowed me to resize it, position it. I, sometimes I'll even like take things and rotate it. Maybe if I want to have it be uh, kind of tilted in the sky, you know, so it looks more natural. Just really doesn't matter. Once once you do that, then you're all set. This is when you hit the entry key, and that locks it down. That's it. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Jason asks, would a motion blur be just as effective since the horse would be moving and you can direct the motion with the motion blur? Um, motion blur in contrast to a Gaussian blur? Yeah. I think so. Uh, you, can, you, can use, you, can, you can use motion blur. The, the only problem with motion blurs is that they're a little too general and they're too global. Um, all you're doing is, like, uh, if I was to apply a motion blur for the glow, uh, I don't know if it would work very well. Uh, I think that what you have to keep in mind when you're talking about creating the glow effect is that what is fundamentally glow? Um, glow is a optics artifact, meaning that your the glass that's, that makes up a lens is not perfect. So that when bright light or a lot of exposure hits that light, hits the lens, the photons kind of scatter inside of the lens because the lens is not perfect. It's not going to perfectly refract every ray of light. And that scattering effect of bright spots is what causes glow in the first place. So um, if lenses were perfect, then silhouettes would never have glow. <laughs> you know? And the same thing can be said about uh, lens flares. You know, obviously, lens flares are a problem of optics. Where, but today, you know, we think that lens flares are cool <laughs> because they look neat. Uh, and it's just a part of photorealism, you know. All right, very cool. Um, I have a couple more questions here, and then we'll go ahead and end it. Let's see here. Gail asks, how does this relate to glowing edges in Photoshop? I'm actually unfamiliar with that. Well, any, any kind of glow effect in Photoshop, again, is going to be unaware of the background. Um, unless there is something in Photoshop that I don't know about <laughs> that, you know, glows using the background. Um, this is an effect that I, I've used for years in the visual effects industry that, again, just simply uh, mimics what the, you know, takes into consideration what the background is. Okay, great. Yeah, there, there is, there is one, one extra note that I want to add on to this as well, which is uh, something, you know, that I did do in the visual effects industry is, um, Usually, when you do have glow coming around something, like in this case, I changed everything around. So let me kind of uh, step backwards here a few times. I can go back to the way that things were before. There we go. Okay, let's get the glow layer back in here again. Okay. Um, usually, if there is something that's really, really bright in the background, so for a moment, let's assume this area here is really bright. Um, one of the things that I would usually do is I would just grab a brush, make sure that brush is really soft. Okay, so you can see that right now over here, I got a nice soft brush and uh, make it kind of big, I would sample the color that is there from the background. So let's say, for example, this yellow right here, right? And uh, I would make the opacity of the brush be something very little, like maybe something as little as just 5%. You can see right there, it's very, very little. And here, I just start kind of applying little brush strokes to it, okay? And you can see what's going on. I'm going to exaggerate this right now just so you can see how much is going to bloom on top of it. And so it's really, really interesting. And you can see that what's, what's happening now is that that bright area is really, really blooming on top of the horse. And it gives it this really beautiful, almost like a lens flare effect right there. So don't let what I just showed you right now with creating this glow effect be the end of your imagination. You can take any areas that you know are bright and, again, do this little trick of sampling some colors there and just adding to it, and it's going to really create those wonderful glows around your topic, around your foreground subject. 
All right, thank you, and I think that is a good place to end. I'd like to say thank you again, Greg. This has been really awesome. I haven't actually used this technique before, and I think I start. I will start, and everybody seems <laughs> really appreciative of it, so that's good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining us again. Greg, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun. Yeah, and I uh, hope to have you back soon. Definitely. All right, everybody, have a good day. Bye-bye. Have a great week, everybody.